So to start with, our first speaker is Manya Singh, who is a fifth grader, keen to share her ideas on mind control gadgets for our daily life and a sneak peek of the uses of this technology for the betterment of our society. So over to you, Manya. Thank you, Ishita. Good afternoon, everybody. As Ishita said, my topic is ideating with mind control gadgets. I may be thinking of the unthinkable today, but I really love to share my idea with you. Have you ever thought of controlling your TV or any other gadget without a remote? Well, it seems that most of you do like that thought. Just imagine not having the hassle of finding a remote, then using your eyes and hands to press the right keys. Then there's more. You have to use your motor skills to change to other channels. Finally, you can watch your favorite show in peace. Did you ever notice how much work you do just to watch your favorite channel? Instead of all that, why don't we just send our brain signals directly to the gadget so we can control it? These gadgets are known as mind control gadgets. I have a question for all of you who all know the world with gadgets that are controlled by our brain. After a few days since I gave my idea, I fell deep into thought. Are there any gadgets in the world that can be controlled by our brain? I discovered that there is some work going on in this direction when I dug in a little deeper. In 1924, Hans Berger discovered electrical activity of human brain and development known as electroencephalography. And that's how the history of brain-computer interfaces, commonly known as BCIs, began. Nowadays, brain contro control gadgets are being developed in laboratories all around the world. Let's see some wonderful examples of present. This technology is already helping physically disabled people in performing simple tasks such as operating a television by controlling artificial arms and legs. Jan Sherman, 53 years old, a Whitehall borough, has quadriplegia for more than nine years and is participating in trial testing brain-computer interface technology that allows her to move a robot arm with her thoughts. This is the prosthetic arm designed by John Hopkins University Applied Physics Laboratory. Another example is the Mindwalker exoskeleton debuted in Belgium and is currently in clinical trials. In the near future, we'll see its uses in all the walks of life, such as in the entertainment industry and the idea of gaming devices controlled by the brain. Advertising companies will be able to see the reaction of people to their advertisements even before it is released by monitoring the brain signals of a small group. In this picture, you can see an exhibitor playing on a flipper machine measuring brain signals in the high-tech fair in the German city of Hanover. A grander use of this technology is already being experimented, though in the early stage. Time is not far when in the future it will change the way how we work and innovations will dramatically change our lives. Some other uses of this technology which I foresee are for detecting dyslexia in early childhood and for other related child developments. In simple words, to cut my long story short of operating TV, now imagine using signals directly from your brain and controlling TV. More, we can also put this as using electrodes to measure brain signals and decode it in real time. 
More common uses could be for detecting, more common uses could be for turning on your air conditioners and staying in the right temperature for all the while without using a remote control, operating mobile phones, steering a car and much more. This is how my idea of mind control gadgets will be used for our daily life in future. Thank you.